My name is Coral Andrews. I'm the Vice President of the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. Uh, just to give you a sense of who we are, we are the state affiliate for the American Hospital Association, the American Healthcare Association, which represents long-term care, and the National Association of Home Care and Hospice. Our hospitals are primarily nonprofit. Our nursing, facility, uh, nursing facilities are a mix of freestanding and hospital affiliated uh, providers. And then of course we have our small business structures which is the home health, home care, infusion, durable medical equipment. And I have looked through the house bill and I recognize that there are um, inclusions in that bill that address each of those areas. Um, in the small amount of time and out of respect for my colleagues here, I'm just gonna do a broad brush to give you a sense of some of the things that we feel need additional attention to enable us to be successful in delivering care in an efficient way across each of the counties. Um, we are separated by bodies of water, which represent both urban and rural communities. Um, the non-contiguous nature of our state, as well as its geographic isolation, is something that we feel has not always been appropriately considered when developing metrics to determine adequacy of payment, wage index projections, and in some situations, the ability even is simply to compete for pilot project opportunities. Uh, we are what we would categorize a closed market, although we are not uh, completely closed economically, we do um, advanced goods and services, obviously, both with the mainland U.S. and other countries, but we do need to be able to survive on our own out here. Hawaii is one of two <laughs> states that is not included in DISH automatically. We've been left out of DISH allotments since the early 90s, and so as the Medicaid budgets are also shrinking as we look at the forthcoming Medicare payment reform, uh, for example, in this past legislative session, we have $12.5 million in the state budget that was approved to draw down on $15 million federal match, and we're, we're unable to do that because of the current economic situation in our state. Additionally, as the congressman mentioned, this has a relative uh, concern with the compact migrant situation because, again, it's just additional cost shifting to our providers when uh, the Medicaid budget doesn't take care of those needs. Uh, we do work with Ernst & Young annually to produce a report. Each of these things we're very happy to forward to you as additional uh, material. That would be great. Uh, in, in that report, we've identified that healthcare in Hawaii ranks fourth among private industries as a contributor to the overall state's GDP. So slowing down that engine also has economic impact to our state. 45% of hospital services in 2007 were paid for by Medicare or Medicaid. Again, giving you a sense of tweaking each of those payment uh, areas, what impact that may have to our overall health care delivery system. Um, we are concerned about the Medicare payment reform initiatives uh, that are being explored. I think in summary, our, our overall observations are that freezing market basket updates as a way of shaping Medicare payment reform isn't truly reform in our eyes. What it does is it just continues to contribute to the overall payment shortfalls that providers are grappling with. We have ideas about what ways we feel payment reform can be enhanced, but by freezing uh, market basket, particularly in our cost of living environment out here, just continues to pull from the uh, overall ability to cover our operational expenditures. Uh, we have the highest aging population per capita in the nation. Therefore, again, with the Medicare payment reform, we've got demand on the rise, um, and we're experiencing more complex needs in our elderly. Um, I'm going to provide some closing comments, again, to respect my colleagues the desire to speak. I did provide a read-ahead to Rose that has some um, honed-in areas uh, that relate to the specifics in the House bill that we'd like um, some additional consideration on. Um, and I'd just like to say that we appreciate the opportunity to give you a sampling of our position of health care reform proposals and to clarify with some examples how 
the proposed measures would impact our state. We are a very interdependent healthcare delivery system. One area that we've spent a lot of time on, which is waitlisted patients. It costs our um, healthcare delivery system, our hospitals in particular, over a hundred million dollars annually because we can't move these patients out of acute care to other more appropriate care settings. Again, it just gives you a sense of how interdependent we are here. And as Congress deliberates changes in the uh, payment and health care reform overall, we want you to be sensitive to understanding that small tweaks in one area contribute to challenges in other areas. And lastly, I would just like to say that um, the homeless population is something that needs to be addressed as a social issue as it relates to medical uh, uh, delivery. Um, the homeless population, even if you increase access to services, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to determine their eligibility. They can't get the documents turned in and therefore it's an additional burden of cost that falls on the health care delivery system. We look forward to continued opportunities to dialogue with the White House Office of Health Reform and are very grateful to you and Congressman Abercrombie and his staff for this opportunity to speak. Thank you.